Good morning. So I'm here to share uh, the story of how we actually scaled our digital business uh, through the pandemic and helped hundreds of small businesses survive. So we started in 1988 to serve the Spanish-speaking uh, community of Los Angeles. We started with print, and uh, we've evolved over the years. Uh, we were uh, the, the largest uh, classified print weekly, and actually, we still are. And, but we have also uh, have a horizontal website, we have verticals, we have mobile, we do events. And uh, why is the U.S. Hispanic market significant? Well, it's actually got a GDP of $2.7 trillion. There are 62 million uh, Hispanics just in the U.S., and about a third of those Hispanics are, uh, are Spanish-speaking dominant. They depend on communicating in Spanish, and that is our niche audience. And I think the reason we've always survived is because we're always part of the community, and so I'll share our story here. 2016 was actually our peak year in revenues. We were at that time 77% uh, print. Uh, digital was an important part of our business, but our, our clients still believed in print. A lot of them didn't want to do any digital. They felt they didn't need it. But by 2017, we did start seeing the decline, and by 2018, it started free-falling, and we actually began crisis planning at that time. We knew it was going to happen. It happened everywhere else, but for us, it just kind of lingered on, and eventually we thought maybe it's not going to happen for a while, but it did. And... Um, so at that time, in 2018, we were 67% print. 2019, we got very lean, and uh, at the beginning of 2020, we were actually uh, poised to have one of the best profitable years ever, but then the pandemic hit. So we lost immediately half of our revenues, uh, more than half of our customers, and had to furlough our employees. Fortunately, we were able to uh, recover with government assistance. 2021 was our recovery year, and we ended up the year with now we're 55% uh, digital company, so finally, and we're stronger than ever because we were very good at saving our government stimulus money and, and being lean, so that uh, it was like having a VC. Um, and then 2022, we're actually projecting to get back to our 2019 revenue. So finally, our digital revenues are growing fast enough to offset the decline in print. So we initially, when we were doing crisis planning in 2018, when our print really started disappearing, we were saying, how can we get our small businesses that have been with us 25 years to f believe in online? We really need to do more training. We need to do diversified uh, revenue streams, uh, focus on horizontal and vertical opportunities that make sense for our clients. We have to adapt faster. We get more into the community and envision our worst case scenario. Most of our revenues were actually coming from affiliated and self-serve revenues. And so in the worst case, if we lost all our print and had to lay off most of our employees, we could probably generate about $8 million a year and survive with just 10 employees. That was our worst case scenario if the print finally uh, disappeared. And then the crisis came. So we actually, hoping that we were going to get government assistance but not knowing if we were going to, we said, okay, finally, it's time to get rid of those print zones that we've been hanging on to, thinking just better sales, better marketing is going to save it, get rid of them, get rid of employees that are never going to sell digital, they don't want to adapt, uh, grew more alliances uh, with uh, uh, the government and civic units, because a lot of the businesses that we serve, Hispanic businesses, a lot of them are established for years, but they may not be their U.S. citizens, and those were the most vulnerable. They were not going to get access to government. Uh, our sweet spot is uh, businesses with less than 10 employees. So even if they were established and qualified for government assistance, a lot of them didn't have the infrastructure to apply. And um, we realized, let's, let's start investing in the skills and tools with the money that we do have to support a remote workforce, if that's what's going to happen, shed any barriers to growth, and reimagine who we could be. Fortunately, we did get $4 million of government stimulus loan, and we're very happy to say that we did everything right. 100% has been officially forgiven. So what were we going to do with that money? First, we needed a short-term plan. And then we'd figure out what the long-term plan of survival to get through all this pandemic and everything that was going on. And it was, finally, we just had to transform our legacy print employees and sales reps into digital marketing experts. We kept brands alive with uh, digital products. Uh, we killed the print version and turned it completely digital, and that was very successful. We had virtual events. 
Um, and we actually invested more in leadership since we had time. We went to the office every day. We were considered an essential business, and I even finally uh, got off my bucket list to take a CEO Stanford uh, scaling course for nine weeks because I could do it remotely. And then, of course, at the bottom, you have to be customer-focused. We're established, we're going to survive, but we have to have our customers survive. Otherwise, there's no point in existing a few years from now. So the short-term survival, we thought, okay, how are we going to get our customers to survive, especially since they're so print-dependent and no one's going to go out there to pick up the magazine and they're not going to be found. So we're tired of trying to explain to them that they need an online presence. We just said, we're going to give away a thousand uh, uh, websites and marketing campaigns to the small businesses. We're going to do it for free. They can test it, and maybe we'll finally convince it that they need it. And this enabled us to keep all the employees that we brought back so that we could get the government loan forgiven. They couldn't go out on the street, you know, with the lockdown, so we said, okay, they're all going to learn how to make websites, and they're going to become digital, uh, create digital products and become digital experts. And we kept them busy, you know, doing all this, and we built the foundation for the future production team of digital because we were always struggling as we grew with our digital agency services. We were always behind the eight ball. We, we couldn't keep up with the growth because we didn't have enough skills. We didn't have enough streamlined processes. And what it uh, told us is that we really need to amplify the investment we have in Twizzle, which is our marketing platform that creates websites and marketing campaigns. We can do Google ads. So people who are not Google ad experts, who are not design experts, who are not website creators, they can actually create a website in 20 minutes with a marketing campaign. We actually, at the end of this, we used to be able to create at the most 20 websites and campaigns a week. At the end of the program, we were able to create 50. And what was in this stimulus package that we created to give away uh, to a thousand businesses? It was the landing page. It was a mini CRM where uh, our sales reps would actually listen to the phone calls. And, and like I said, our clients are 10 uh, employees or less, and sometimes the wife was answering the phone. They weren't doing it properly. So we actually learned to coach our clients on how to answer phone calls, how to respond to email, and very simple. It was a CRM system that we created uh, in our Twizzle program. And it had lead generation. And so uh, even if someone went on vacation, they no longer canceled their campaigns because we said, we can follow up with those leads for you later. And we got, we got them in directories, in Yelp. And the Google My Business was really key. Analytics, some small businesses, they don't want to use it, but we would still show it to them. And it would be a way that we could prove that it really has um, uh, ROI and call tracking. So uh, over a thousand businesses applied. Uh, we were able to make 612 uh, marketing packages and some of the businesses just didn't because they decided to close down during the pandemic. And we had a goal of upselling 10% and we exceeded that goal with over 118 dollars and $200,000 in contractual revenues. And that was just during those few months. There's been much more success since then. So good deeds pay off. We helped many of our customers survive. They finally realized they love online. They like being found with their Google profile on top of the page. And we got an Epi Award, editor and publisher, and Google and IAB profiled what we did, you know, the good deed that we did helping these small businesses. And we, of course, build trust in, uh, with our customers and community. And that's why we've been in business 34 years, because they know we start with print, we do digital, we do social media, and we don't try to just sell them and be a vendor. We always try to sell them something that's affordable and that works for our type of small business. And this was a good model uh, for us to expand in other niche categories and other geographic markets. Free is always good. Free is a great way to invest in the community. And if we can convert 10%, that, that's a win winner for us. And of course, it fortified our digital marketing agency skills. We are able to scale. We know what it's going to take to scale. We put in more processes. We made more automation using AI. And we're able to uh, build remote workforces so we don't have to just use um, US um, talent, we can use uh, people in other countries, which is very helpful, and uh, we can definitely scale our digital agency. The biggest payoff was that in 2022, we have a really good chance of getting back to our 2019 uh, revenues, and we are 63% digital. Events has not come back yet, it's starting to. Uh, print is declining, but steady and under control managed. So our vision statement, we tweaked it during the pandemic, but it's always been part of the same thing, and I think what gives us longevity, 
longevity is to be the trusted channel of communication for buyers and sellers that connect in thriving Latino communities. So we're not after all Latinos. We, we, our niche is Spanish-speaking Latinos and Spanish-speaking Latinos who tend to live in communities where probably 70% or more of the community is Latino and they communicate at the stores in Spanish. And so what is the long-term plan? Most of our revenues actually come from uh, California. And if we could follow our best practices there, what we've done with the community there, we could, uh, we could really grow our company, you know, focused on the best horizontals and verticals, try to narrow our focus, not be all over the place, uh, look at emerging and unique categories, the blue ocean strategy, the ones that the general market is not uh, going. We talked a lot about real estate here. We don't need to compete with... Uh, Realtor.com, uh, uh, Zillow, or uh, Redfin, but maybe we can come up with something that shows these are the top communities where uh, Latinos live, where they're comfortable in their culture, and focus on that part of the audience, something like that. Uh, for us to grow, we need more reps. We're really struggling with uh, reps. We have 40 right now. We had a goal to grow to 50, and we're not there. And also, uh, one of the things that I, I learned from the scaling class was grow the average sales by rep, not focus just on getting the top reps, the best reps. They're kind of fickle. Um, but just really try to, uh, what is the best model of an average sales rep, and how can I get that rep to grow like 1% a week, which is not a lot, but that can really add up if we have a whole sales force. Generate more leads. When we were print, uh, the calls just came in on the phone, the lines were out the door, people were placing ads. We don't have that print as a marketing vehicle anymore. We have to do a lot more uh, lead generation automation for all the different horizontal categories that we have and the ones that make the most sense for us. And fill the technical gap. We've gone from being SEO OSEM internally to externally, and we need to have a hybrid because we've been falling behind on taking care of our, of our horizontal website, which at one time was the largest uh, for the Spanish-speaking community in the U.S., but we've neglected it a bit, and I've learned a lot at this conference and plan to refocus on that. It's not going to be a sidekick anymore for us. And then uh, the debate of being um, a marketplace uh, publisher versus a digital marketing agency. It's a uh, I've been practicing being a publisher for 34 years. I never thought I'd be the CEO of a digital marketing agency. Uh, and, and so that's a challenge. Uh, how do I lead my team? Will we bring in experts to try and create process to make sure we fulfill? But we have, um, we have opportunities with our niche audience because we're willing to hold their hand. We're willing to take small campaigns and uh, keep it for the long term. Our customers go for 52 weeks, they go for two to three years, so that really makes it worth it, as opposed to a lot of other agencies that just have those one-offs of 5,000 a month. And then our BHAG goals, uh, that was one of the things I learned to scale. I used to think very small, I'm a lifestyle entrepreneur, but I do want to build a company to last, so we have to create big, hairy, audacious goals, and, and we can do it, we have the assets. So where are the opportunities? Before we relied just on our affiliate revenue and self-serve, and, and it was very comfortable, and I, I ran that with one or two people, and it's very profitable. But the real opportunity is with the small business marketing agency sales, and that was scaring me because, I, like I said, I don't know how to, how to lead that, but fortunately we brought in experts and really focused uh, on how we help our clients and getting results. And so that is what we're going to focus on. And direct online classified sales, we still need to do more on that too. And why are we successful with our digital agency? It's not the perfect marketing bundle, but it's not one size fits all. We're very good at coming up with a bundle for our attorneys, a bundle for the dentists, a bundle for the plumbers, a bundle for the auto services. And Facebook works in one case, Instagram works in one case. You know, we do, we do PPC at very, we could do $20 PPC a week and it's automated and it's effective. But I think the real asset that we have compared to our competitors is that we have our own horizontals and verticals. And that's really powerful that, uh, because that's a total uh, profit margin that we don't have to buy Google ads, we don't have to buy Facebook for a lot of the categories. We can just use our own Facebook groups, uh, social media, Pinterest, and our own uh, horizontal and vertical websites. But it's key to, to stay on top of the, the client analytics and help them and have alerts if the campaigns are not working. 
So the mindset to scale is to continually, you know, set our big, hairy, audacious goals. We go week by week. We dissect it by rep, by product, what makes sense to make sure that we get to those five-year goals that we have set for ourselves. We have to work on succession planning. I've been wanting to retire for five years. I need to. But it's not just myself. It's who's going to replace you know, so the marketing director moves up, so the sales manager moves up, who replaces them, so we have to really focus on that if we want a company to last. Um, we have so much um, knowledge, and, and uh, we have to share that knowledge. The bigger we are, the more we're not cross-training our employees, so we're really focused on cross-training. Zoom training has really helped, so we have more meetings now, and we have quick meetings where we can share knowledge. And uh, the goal of improving by 1% a week, we've shown so many reps, we have tools for them. They could see if I just sell $100 more this week, I'll make my bonus. And that is really incentivizing for a lot of the reps, all those little tools so they can get motivated. And then our sales training, we can't train you know, 40 people at one time. We realize we have to train advanced, the middle groups, and then the, the newbies, and come up with different types of uh, performance-based uh, motivation for people who are just starting from zero. How do we do that? Because that's going to help us scale. We, of course, have to embrace more AI uh, to nurture leads, not just for ourselves, but for our clients. And we have to sell scalable products, stay away from the one-offs that, uh, that can't be scaled and that only one person wants. These are the big, hairy, audacious goals that we set. My biggest goal used to be 30 million, and, and trying to think bigger than that, doubled it 60 million. But we've dissected this, and we actually have the products, we have the processes, and we have the audience. We can do this. We've just been a little in our comfort zone, and um, we're by building the trust and helping our customers grow by getting them more clients, Mas Clientes is the name of our digital agency, which means more clients, by really focusing on that. And then, of course, the self-serve and, and automated revenues. That's always nice. That, that's extra gravy that grows on the side for us. Um, we, can really, we really believe we can get to $60 million in, uh, by 2026. And then what's, one thing that's really important, and, and once again, the reason we're always surviving no matter what crisis, no matter how media channels change and how people move around, is our customers are so loyal to us because they trust us. Um, we participate um, in, in cultural fairs. We, we give them white glove service with bargain basement prices. We're always giving training to our customers. So they learn how to use digital products. So they learn how to use CRM. So they learn how to grow their businesses. We had one client that we sold a $79 a Google My Business marketing campaign. And with that campaign, he was found on Google by Amazon. They, it was a tamale hole in the wall restaurant. They ordered $48,000 of tamales. We thought, wow, what a great testimonial. Just with the $79 campaign, this client you know, got this great, um, great uh, uh, order. Well, then it turned out that he turned it down because he couldn't fulfill it. So we had to teach them to scale, to be resourceful so they can also grow, because the more our small customers grow, we have so many stories. We met one here in Miami uh, two days ago. He said, when I started with you, I started with like a $20 ad, and I had one moving truck. Now I have five. And we have so many stories like that, and we love that. And so we're always trying to find, how can we help those types of customers grow? So that's our team, and uh, I hope you like my story. Martha, thanks very much. Can we bring up Slido, thanks? Excellent. Thank you for that. Super interesting how you're... And I'm, we've had you present before maybe four years ago right, or right. so, and it was a very different story in that point in time. Right. So this is fantastic. How, um, how, do you have to raise capital to go after this uh, big, hairy, audacious We goals? don't. We don't. We raised capital originally to start in, nine, in uh, 1988, about 350000 from family and friends. And uh, my husband and I are both CPAs, and so we really watch those numbers. Cash flow is big. We've been able to fund everything internally, and then we got this big bump, the $4 million from the government stimulus. So that, that is pretty much sitting in the bank. So for a while, we don't need that. What we are interested in to grow is probably more a strategic investor. It's more someone to bring us the knowledge uh, so we can get there a little faster, so I don't have to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. I know it's interesting, because when you were talking about um, the desire to retire, right? <laughs> That's where a strategic investor steps in and actually right. helps a lot because they can bring 
maybe a network of people who can then help you find the next CEO for the business. Right. Or if it's someone who raises internally, someone those, those to motivate levels. them and mentor them yeah. exactly. And, 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 and often what happens when a strategic investor comes in is that the the uh, motivation changes in the organisation because there's far more focus on getting to that 60 million target faster. How do I bring it forward a year? Right. For example. We've been approached by a lot of people before and they always want to bring in their own people, kick everyone out. I go, no, this is our family. And they've been fantastic. A lot of them started in high school and they took us to this level. I was only able to get it to 2 million in the first 12 years. Look where they got us. And so I want to, if we bring in a strategic investor, I want someone who's going to build up our team to take it to another level together. Yeah, understand that. Now, what's the split of your bundles? Um, for example, like an electronic shop, you know, what are the features? Okay, so we do mostly services. We don't do a lot of retail. So something like, um, uh, a, usually it has to have Google My Business. Reputation management is so important. Uh, we have a customer who just bought a restaurant. They inherited all this bad reputation. And that is something that's very inexpensive, and the client loves you when you fix their reputation. So that's important. We always have ads inside our horizontal. We always have a print ad if that's available. And I... I don't like doing Google AdWords, but if I have to, it's sometimes the fastest way to get them results until we find something else, either Facebook, Instagram, or our own assets to start getting them leads. But it's about how many leads, asking the client, how many leads do you need? You know, how many do you want every week? And try to meet that budget. Okay. Now, you had a chart um, earlier which showed the decline of print mm -hmm. and the growth of online. Right. Now, the interesting thing about the decline of print is that you clearly know where that's going, right? Oh, yeah. It's going towards zero. Now, at zero, it has no value. Right, the print side. Right, right. So then you, you've got this interesting dilemma, right? You, you could sell that print side to someone else today who maybe aggregates and so on, but that's cutting off part of the family. Right, and not only right. that, it's the best marketing tool for the rest of the products. Right, so then, but if, that, if the print continues to go towards zero, you're going to have to close it anyway because it's got the hard right. costs attached to it. So there is an inevitability in all of this. We've been waiting for that. Okay. We've been prepared for that. Right. And it's happening slower than we thought. We actually already thought we'd be almost down to zero and still hanging in at 150000 a week. Okay. <laughs> Which is good. How much of your visibility products are with internal promotions within your platform versus external promotions on social media and Facebook and Google and so on? Of our marketing? Yeah, what you offer your customers. What we offer is probably... Um, 50-50. I want it to be more internal. I want to spend more money from all the things I'm learning from your conference on our horizontal and vertical websites. St start focusing on SEO again because it's fantastic in Los Angeles. We just need to do the same in Miami and New York for that business that's growing. But right now it's probably 50-50 and probably in other regions it's going to be more external than internal, but I keep hoping to change that. Now, how do your customers measure success in working with you? How do they think, is it, oh, I got a lead and you know, the, the, the they, 48,000 They want to close dollar. deals. It's all about how, how much did I make, did I close a deal? And a lot of times they go, oh, the phone's not ringing, they're not seeing the emails, they didn't follow up. Um, it's about deals. Right. So yeah. how do you then communicate, because a lot of the time it's how do you communicate the value you're giving someone so that they understand they're getting value? How do you communicate that? So we have two ways of doing We can automatically send a dashboard that we have from Twizzle, and we try to bring in not just the results from the uh, landing page, but we're trying to bring in the Facebook, the Google My Business, even the print results in there, whatever we can accumulate, and we send that to the client. But if they don't like opening their email, then we send it to the rep, and the rep shows it to the client and actually prints it out and shows them, look at all the results you got. Yeah. Okay. And that engages them, and, and they love it. I do like the concept of printing it out. Sometimes that's what you have to do. I know. <laughs> and and, and, and it, it is reality, right? Because you're right. dealing with, with very small businesses. Small businesses, that's right. We love them. very good at making tamales, but maybe not very good at running the yeah. business. No, but other people don't want that business. We'll take them. We make millions from pennies. understand. So, and how do, you, how do your revenues split between marketing agency and classifieds? So um, we're doing about 140000 a week in, um, in the... Mar uh, digital marketing agency services, and we're doing about um, 50,000 a week in online classified direct sales. And then we do about another 20,000 through self serve, and then we do about another 35,000 through automated. Okay, fantastic. Martha, I really like how your business is growing. So well done. Yep. And thank you very much for sharing very well, sharing a lot of information today. Great. So thank you. Thank you so much. Fantastic. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs>